Here we are on the playing field and this is the clubhouse, our main menu. From this point we can access any of the seven T's that make up the game. There are also two additional reference items on the menu. The one contains answers to selected questions and the second covers the glossary. Each T has two sections. The first contains the detailed lecture and the second part is a short quiz on the work contained in that section. In this trailer we will be looking at a few selected extracts from the playing field. So let's get going to the introduction. From the main menu we select the number 1T. From here we go to the introduction. Welcome to the playing field. This is no ordinary field. It can have any number of pockets situated all over the area. These are not just ordinary holes. Each one has a name. And they can add. Where do the values come from that they add up? From the balls that go into the pockets. Where do the balls come from? From the transactions. That's the way the game goes. Once you get used to it, it's actually quite simple. Hang in there with me. The aim of this program is to gain an understanding of the basic concepts and principles involved in this accounting process. If this is all new to you, you will find that you often need to go through the information a number of times in order to develop a thorough understanding of the underlying concepts. You may also find that you need to refer to an earlier chapter to clarify something that has already been covered. Don't be alarmed by this. The program is designed that way. The duration of each section is relatively short but contains a lot of detail that may require repeated viewing. Back to the clubhouse and let's now select T number two, the field. From this T you will investigate the field's layout and the four quadrants it is divided into. You will be introduced to the concept of an income statement and balance sheet and how the various pockets fit into each quadrant. As with any playing field, there is a center line. To the left we have the debit players and to the right the credits. There is one more interesting characteristic about our field. It has a second dividing line, one that runs lengthways down the field. This produces a top part and the bottom half of the field. The top half we refer to as the balance sheet area and the bottom part as the income statement area. Back to the number 2T menu and let's now go and look at the quiz for that T. The student uses her or his notebook to write down the answers and goes back to check them if not happy or absolutely sure that her answers are in fact correct. Let's look at a few more extracts. Let's look at how these balances are calculated. If a red ball, a debit entry in other words, to the value of 2000 Rand has gone into a pocket, then the counter will change from zero to 2000 red. The red color would indicate that the balance is a debit. If a second ball goes into the same pocket, a blue one this time, so it is a credit, to the value of 600 rand, then the counter will change to 1400 red in order to reflect the net value 
of the balls that have gone into the pocket. From number 40, we take a closer look at transactions, where they originate and what they mean, how each transaction is recorded in the double entry accounting system, and finally, where they end up and how they are accumulated. Remember, the transaction represents what has happened in the business. But before the transaction can be recorded in the accounting system, it must be translated into accounting entries. And it is these debit and credit entries that are then recorded in the accounting system. Now we come to a transaction that you have not yet seen in this course. A sale. Sales are what makes a retail operation tick. Without sales, the company would not exist. So step one defines the transaction as a sale worth 2,200 Rand. Step two, revenue or income is recorded as a credit in the income statement area of the playing field. Debit your losses, credit your gains. There is a pocket for sales, so that is where the credit entry will go. This is a cash sale and therefore the bank asset will increase with the amount of the sale. So the debit entry will go to bank. Step three, process the entries as we define them. Debit to bank, bit of an angle, there we are, and the bank balance increases by 2,200 to 12,900 together with the debit balance counter at the top. Sales must receive the credit of 2,200 straight down the line. Sales has a credit balance of 2,200 and the credit balance counter is again in sync with the debits at 17,200. But that is not the end of it. A sale is a very unique type of transaction. Up to now, we have seen that each transaction has one set of entries that defines what that transaction has achieved. A sale, however, needs two sets of entries to reflect the impact of the transaction on the business. We have just done the first part reflecting the revenue that the transaction generated for the company. But the 2,200 is clearly not the profit that we earn. The second set of entries records the cost of the goods that we sold. As a retailer, we purchase goods, mark them up, and then sell them at a profit. We need to still account for the cost of the goods that we sold. This second set of entries attached to a sale always follows the same pattern. Reduce stock by crediting that pocket or account and debit the cost of sales account in the income statement. Both of these pockets have debit balances and therefore the cost of sales entries have no impact on the debit balance counter. Remember that we saw the same thing happen when we looked at stock and bank. Also two accounts that have debit balances. So step three, debit cost of sales and credit stock with a good firm chip. <laughs>